Yes, it's Samus' first big adventure on the Wii. So, how does this one play out differently from the other Metroid Prime games, or from the Metroid series at all? Is it as good as the other ones? Is it better? Well, you'll get my own personal perspectives as you will as well. But first... Before I begin the briefing, let me introduce 242, the flagship's Aurora unit. Ah, an organic supercomputer. Fascinating. It's my understanding that the Galactic Federation's core network is comprised of such units. That is correct, Core. And we serve as the network's master control. However, currently the network is down. That seems inefficient. But necessary. You see, seven days ago, we discovered that all Aurora units were infected with an unknown virus. We were forced to bring the network down. Fortunately, our scientists were quickly able to devise a vaccine. Unit 242 was the first AU to receive the vaccine. We were able to completely purge the virus. Thanks to our security protocols, we were able to shut down the network before the damage from the virus became irreversible. But we're still vulnerable. If the pirates decide to launch a major offensive, we'd be hard-pressed to defend ourselves. We must rid the other AUs of that virus and bring the network back online. That's where you come in. We need you to deliver the vaccine to each of the AUs in this system. We'd also like you to investigate the pirates' activity in the area. We need to know what they're up to. Condition red. All personnel combat ready stations. Repeat. Condition red. Sir, a space pirate attack fleet has just warped out of some sort of wormhole. They're also heading for Sector Zero, the planet's home base. Damn! They're targeting the planetary defense system. Get down to the planet and aid the ground troops. Stop those pirates from disabling the defense system. Go! Samus, get to your ship. We need you down on the planet. Until we get the fleet in formation... And now the real fun begins! This getting to the planet alone is a lot of fun, because there's a lot of action every corner you turn. Whether it's saving Galactic Federation troopers from being sucked into outer space, or ejecting yourself into outer space just so you can get to your own ship so you can head down to the planet Noron and save it. Once you arrive at the planet, you'll have to fight off an entire army of space pirates. Fortunately, Samus isn't going to do it alone. She'll get the help from other bounty hunters, like Iceman here. If you don't make it to the top in time, then you can kiss this planet goodbye. Hey, relax. You're the good guys. Just as we prevail and all that stuff. Right, Samus? But of course, with new friends comes old foes, like Ridley. Oh, I missed you too, buddy. But I'm not gonna miss this time. And Dark Samus, who injects you and all the other bounty hunters with Phazon. Which apparently sets up the whole theme of corruption. Yeah, Samus has just enough energy left to save the planet and complete her mission. and then passes out. She then awakens one month later to find out that she's been enhanced by the new power suit that fires Phazon with double the energy of your normal ammo. Unfortunately, you have to use an energy tank, and doing this too much can cause you to get corruption and automatically end your game. So, use it when necessary. You'll then find out a new objective from the Aurora unit. During the attempted pirate invasion of Norian, it was confirmed that two nearby planets were similarly attacked. These planets are named Rio and Elysia. These Leviathans have impacted and embedded themselves deep into each planet, spreading a virulent phase on carried inside their bodies. The Leviathans must be destroyed. And now the gameplay feels like it starts to slow down a little. 
Yes, after a great opening, you're rewarded to exploring planets that seem quiet. Too quiet. And then what you have to do is find ways to open up doors, find new paths, collect items that either increase your health, ammo, or give you new abilities in order to progress along your way. You'll also be running into the other bounty hunters. But something's not right. Oh, that can't be good. Unlike in Prime 2, your map actually gives you your objective a lot sooner than normal. It makes it a lot easier to use. You also have to scan almost every single thing in the entire game if you want to get 100% completion in scanning. And of course, you'll be using the Morphall in a couple of good ways. However, I want to know why the developers seem like they kind of redesigned some of the enemies from the previous games. Like, don't these guys look a lot like the game? Not very creative, guys. One big drawback this game has is the fact that you have to keep going to this spaceship that was attacked and had some information and abilities stashed away in it. You have to keep going back to this place all the way throughout the entire game. Combat with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck feels a little awkward at first. When you lock onto them, the screen shifts around to them, so any place that you were already aiming at will then have to be recentered. The motion controls both enhance the game and feel tacked on at some times. To be honest, I've only played through this, through this game once, and that's all I really wanted to do. After such a great opening, there really wasn't much to put me back into this game. And there's just not a lot of replay value to it, as things just slow down, and the only replay value is getting all your health and ammo that really don't add that much to the gameplay. That's why I'm giving it a 4 out of 5. A couple of flaws, but overall a good game. Welcome.